And make the case that, at least to me, because I think there's a, there's a flaw, maybe I don't understand what you're saying. I, I think there's a flaw in, in your logic, but maybe you think we need to, we need more time to decide exactly how to do this, because we know how many times there, there can be unintended consequences. It's a, it's a major thing maybe to undertake, and maybe we need uh, some thoughtful um, analysis uh, of how to do it, and therefore I would say don't rush it right now. But your reasoning I don't understand, Jeff. Can you, Jeff, Jeff B, could you explain it? Well, I, we agree with that. Actually, we wrote yesterday, we don't think this is exactly the time nor connected to these kinds of issues. It ought to be carefully thought through, and there's a reasonable debate to have between reform and repeal. The basic problem, which is not the one that was just talked about, is that if, tomorrow, if this morning NBC News or the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times puts out information that is false, defamatory, or fraudulent, they're held responsible for it. But if a big social platform does that, knowingly, carelessly putting out false, defamatory, or fraudulent information, they're not held responsible for it. And that's a real question as to why it should be like that. The original argument was that Internet platforms, this is 20, 30 years ago, could not be held responsible for millions of posts that uh, we needed to start a vibrant online talk community. And that's happened. But today we're in a different position. We have very large companies. And they are knowingly targeting certain users with certain content, monetizing it to certain advertisers. And there's probably a reasonable way to hold them as accountable for false or defamatory information as is the way that NBC News is treated. It's got nothing to do with censorship. All these platforms are able today, with 230 or without it, to put up any information or opinion they want. The question is, what degree of responsibility should they have? Well, if, if it's user-generated, Jeff, uh, Jeff B., if it's user-generated, you know, the, the, you're, it, it's the, the pipes that, that you're asking, you know, to, to decide what, what they can put up and what they can. It, it, number one, it, it, in practice, it's just too difficult. Number two, I'm, I'm, I think I can handle it. I think I can, you know, look into, I, I'd rather see everything. I mean, maybe not hate speech, obviously, but I'd rather see everything. And then I'd like to decide myself. Because immediately now, the minute you get into this area that you're talking about right now, this is when we do get to Senator Johnson's. Uh, 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 complaint. And we saw it. We saw what social media did with Twitter and Facebook, with, with the laptop incident with, with, with Hunter Biden. They, they shouldn't be able to decide uh, uh, that one side benefits exclusively on, on what they decide to censor and what they don't put on. That's where you get into that, that issue. I don't want the Silicon Valley, you know, 20-somethings deciding what's true and what's not for me. That's like the last thing I want. Well, they're not. And uh, nobody they were. They did. They just did. No, but look at you're on. You have 230 right now, and these platforms are free under 230 to suppress, block, label, as you just said. The question is, as we move forward, if they're knowingly or carelessly disseminating false, defamatory, or fraudulent information, because they're clearly quite aware of what it is, they target it, they monetize it, then what should be their responsibility? And there's a very reasonable argument, I think you're searching for it, for a repeal, pro a reform program, because, right, that would walk into a reasonable kind of moderate position, because, yes, there's a lot of third-party content. The argument to go for reform instead of repeal would be there's plenty of... Uh, small startups that we'd all like to see compete with these giants. And there, there are already carve-outs in 230 for sex trafficking, for child pornography. We could have carve-outs for false medical information, for defamatory, knowing, careless defamation. Those are not uh, legitimate political interests of the country. Those are simply responsible behavior in the public forum.
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.